So in this lesson, we'll be exploring the high yield exam time, which is how do we evaluate dialysis with reference to the function of the kidney. So recall that the kidney is very complex. It engages in active and passive transport. It filters approximately 200 liters of body fluid a day. That's your entire circulatory system, which is five liters, approximately 40 times. The kidneys have a lot of reserve. You only need one kidney to survive. So it's very difficult even in modern day society and technology to replicate and effectively replace the function of the kidney. And currently we have failed to do so. So dialysis is a very subpar technology and I'm gonna explain why that is. So the first important thing you should know is that the kidneys always function. Urine is always being produced. And if you compare that to dialysis, you only get filtration when you are on dialysis. So those five hours, three time sessions a week on hemodialysis or the overnight sessions on peritoneal dialysis. The second most important point that examiners are looking for that you state in your benefits of the kidney function is that the kidney engages in both passive and active transport. Dialysis only engages in passive transport and that is osmosis for water and diffusion for ions and waste products. Now, recall active transport is a movement of a molecule against its concentration gradient. So that is from a low concentration to a high concentration, and it requires energy. This is so important to eliminate your waste products and reabsorb all your vital nutrients like glucose and amino acids. Key point being, all of your urea is pumped into the nephron for elimination via active transport. And all of your glucose and amino acids are reabsorbed, again, via active transport back into the bloodstream. Dialysis can't do this, and hence, urea diffusion ceases once there is an equal concentration of urea both in the dialysis tubing and in the circulatory fluid in the blood vessel. The next most important point is that your normal glomerular filtration rate is greater than 100. And that represents 100 milliliters per minute per 1.73 cubic centimeters of kidney tissue. Compare that with dialysis, and it's less than 15. And that is even at end-stage renal levels. When you put someone on dialysis, the glomerular filtration rate, which is how we actually define kidney function, does not improve substantially at all. So dialysis is a very slow process. Now recall, the kidneys, especially in the proximal convoluted tubules, undergo reabsorption. In the distal convoluted tubule, it undergoes secretion. Versus dialysis, which only undergoes filtration. And with the kidneys, you do produce urine, whereas on dialysis, you don't produce urine. And we call that oliguria. And if someone produces no urine at all, it marks very severe end-stage renal failure, and we call that anuria. So let's have a look at the details in what we need to mention in our answer. Now with every evaluation question, we always structure it as pros, cons, and a judgment statement. If it's greater than four marks, remember to include a definition of dialysis. So the pros is that it reduces symptom severity and it can prolong life. But remember, it is ultimately a palliative treatment, meaning that all individuals on dialysis will die. In fact, the outcome for patients on dialysis is comparable to certain cancers. The cons are exactly what we've mentioned. There is no active transport and hence waste still remain in the blood. It's time consuming, it's not curative, and each individual form has its own disadvantages. So peritoneal dialysis has a disadvantage of peritonitis. Hemodialysis has several disadvantages, one of which includes joint problems and hypotension, which is a loss of consciousness on dialysis due to the rapid removal of your blood. And that's been read in here. 
So this is my judgment on dialysis and feel free to have your own. But it's important to note that dialysis is not curative and the only curative therapy for kidney failure is kidney transplant. And that is shown on this slide. Very interesting fact, these are the two diseased kidneys. So it could be diabetes, it could be high blood pressure, remember, or it could be a polycystic kidney disease in which the kidneys would be very large and cystic in appearance. Now we don't actually remove the two kidneys. When we do a kidney transplant, we simply connect the new kidney to the existing network of blood vessels. And you can actually feel the new kidney in the front abdomen of a person with a transplant. Now, although a transplant is curative, it's important to note it has its own side effects. When you suppress the immune system, you have a high risk of infection. You also have a high risk of cancer, and that is because your immune system is your best defense against cancer. And hence, when you suppress it, neoplastic or cells that have mutated and become cancerous do not get destroyed. Let's have a look at the details of dialysis versus the kidney. So you can see I've written intermittent versus continuous. That's a very important point to note. I've also noted that urea diffusion from the blood vessel to the dialysis tubing will stop when there is an equal concentration at both ends. There is no active transport compared to the kidney where 100% of the urea will be secreted into the distal convoluted tubule, the DCT. Do we remember what happens at the glomerulus and Bowman's capsule? Yep, so that's filtration. And what about what happens at the proximal convoluted tubule? That's reabsorption. Now what's actively reabsorbed and what's passively reabsorbed here? Glucose and amino acids are actively reabsorbed or ions are passively reabsorbed. What about the two groups of molecules that do not pass across the capillary network in filtration? Those are your red blood cells and your proteins. In your descending limb of loop of the Henle, what occurs? Water reabsorption by osmosis. What about the ascending limb of the loop of Henle? Sodium reabsorption. So again, I'm just going to quickly identify that, that we have the water being reabsorbed. And here we have our sodium being reabsorbed. And recall at the collecting duct, that is actually where we have majority of our water reabsorption. And that occurs under hormonal influence. And that concludes our evaluation of dialysis.